Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time, trying to find balance in the world as it is, and balance in my attitudes and behaviour, so I can be part of the world and included rather than excluded. What helps me? Well, family, friends, community, professionals all played their part and played their part in my recovery and also a fellowship and that fellowship is AA Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't speak for it, never can, never will. But I share how it helps me on a daily basis in my videos. So what is AA? This is the AA preamble shared at the beginning of every meeting of AA and I can only emphasize over and over that it is the many voices who share their experience, strength and hope on a daily basis, the many voices in fellowship which offers, offers solutions to the problems we have or simply enhances how we live our lives because we learn what works for others may work for us. So this is the AA preamble shared at the beginning of every meeting. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, den denomination, politics, organisation or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And what's worked for me in recovery is listening to the many and being able to listen to anybody out there or in the world who has wisdom to share which can be put into practice by me. So the whole fellowship program is always about action to change my attitudes and behaviour, to be included in society and in family and community as life offers. That's what it works out to be for me, how to find a way to live life, have a purpose in it and be a part of, no matter what it might be and it is always about the spirit of unity, service and recovery in fellowship. I never speak for fellowship as a whole, I can't, never can, never will, don't want to, because it is full of unique authentic people who will share their message where they will. And that's how it works, we share where it feels appropriate. So I, as I say, I can only speak for me and my recovery, and what's helped me a lot is the, uh, in fact, Overall, the 12 step action program of AA has helped me. And reading from this book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, the 12 steps are as follows with a little paragraph beforehand. AA's manner of making ready to receive this gift of the 12 steps lies in the practice of the 12 steps in our program. So let's consider briefly what we have been trying to do up to this point. Step 1 showed us an amazing paradox. We found that we were totally unable to be rid of the alcohol obsession until we first admitted that we were powerless over it. So yes, powerless over alcohol and also I realise now, powerless over people, places and things. I can't make the world the way I want it to be. I can live in the world as it is. In step 2 we saw that since we could not restore ourselves to sanity that is restore ourselves to, to not drinking and find a sane path to live. Some higher power must necessarily do so if we were to survive. And for me the higher power is the collective wisdom of all and everyone on the planet. Consequently, in step three, we turned our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. And for me, God represents the truth of life as it is today love and wisdom. Truth, absolute truth, not my opinion about how life ought to be. Love, the ability to love people and be loved back unconditionally. 
and keep on listening to the wisdom of those around me where it makes sense so I can be a part of let go and let God for the time being those for the time being we who were atheist or agnostic discovered that our own group in fellowship or AA as a whole would suffice as a higher power and for me that includes wisdom from others from whatever source be it uh, a religious source or an agnostic source or an atheistic source whatever works working in my life to be included and part of I'm not con trying to control everything. Beginning with step four, we commenced to search out the, the things in our lives, in our, sorry, things in ourselves, which have brought us to physical, moral, and spiritual bankruptcy. So physically, completely, compulsively addicted, moral, moral bankruptcy, not understanding or making sense of anything, having no values, and spiritual bankruptcy no ability to live in the present moment for me. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory as a life story, understanding our assets and liabilities in our personal traits. Looking at step five, we decided that an inventory taken alone wouldn't be enough. We knew we had to quit the deadly business of living alone with our conflicts and in honesty confide these to God, if that is your belief, or in good conscience, and another human being. At step six, many of us balked for the practical reason that we did not wish to have all our defects of character removed because we still loved some of them too much and defects of character are often around the seven deadly sins which are easy to look up and again it's always things out of proportion and to extremes. Yes, at step six many of us bolt for the practical reason that we did not wish to have all our defects of character removed because we still loved some of them too much. Yet we knew we had to make a settlement with the fundamental principle of step six which is about restoring balance in our character, our attitude and our behaviour. So we decided that while we still had some flaws of character that we could not yet relinquish we ought nevertheless to quit our stubborn rebellious hanging on to them we said to themselves, this I cannot do today, perhaps I can stop crying out, no, never. Then in step seven, we humbly asked God to remove our shortcomings, such as he could or would under the conditions of the day we asked. And this is true of all the steps of AA, as long as we understand what the principles are, the twelve steps and suggestions. We have them in mind on a daily basis, so if we reflect on those on a daily basis, we are more likely to find balance in our attitude and behaviour. Then in step seven we humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings such as he, will, he could or would under the conditions of the day we asked. So step seven shortcomings about having not enough of something, not enough of the good things in life, the good attitudes and the good behaviour which provide balance. But don't forget life will tip us both ways towards our assets and our liabilities in personal traits so being being mindful of that in step six and seven means we get a balance of understanding where our behavior is going to take us if we continue to follow difficult and dangerous ways of looking at the world yes in step eight we continue to our house cleaning and this comes from step four where we, where we did our life story for we saw that we were not only in conflict with ourselves but also with people and situations in the world in which we lived. We had to begin to take up, make our peace and so we listed the people we had harmed and became willing to set things right, again out of our life story. We followed this up in step nine by making direct amends or restitution to those concerned except when it would, it would injure them or other people. So we don't go on a... On a we don't create a list and then go madly trying to make amends to everybody if by doing so we create harm in the process and of course we need to do that with help nobody does an inventory on their own successfully and then goes out and tries to make amends it takes a bit of time patience and sharing about it with somebody we trust by this time at step 10 
we had begun to get a basis for daily living and we keenly realised that we would need to continue taking personal inventory and that when we were in the wrong we ought to admit it promptly. So on any given day what is disturbing us in our behaviour, in our attitudes, what in the world is disturbing us and how does it impact and what are we going to do about it in a constructive positive way. Sometimes it means we can do nothing except get out of the way of problems and stay in the solution which is working for us. In step 11 we saw that if a higher power had restored us to sanity and had enabled us to live with some peace of mind in a sorely troubled world then such a higher power was worth knowing better by as direct contact as possible. The persistent use of meditation and prayer we found did open the channel so that where there had been a trickle there was now a river which led to sure power and safe guidance from God or good conscience as you come to understand for yourself as we were increasingly better able to understand him simply how to be open honest and willing and live to good values rather than a set of values which are distorted by addiction so practicing these steps we had a spiritual awakening and actually the spiritual awakening is to see life on life's terms for me about which there was finally no question looking at those who were only beginning that's newcomers and still doubted themselves the rest of us were able to see the change setting in and I see that very often where newcomers start with where I did completely flawed nothing to nothing to live for and then suddenly the lights come back on as they see a way out of addiction on a daily basis into the solution of living living to good values developing good attitudes and behavior yes looking at <coughs> sorry looking at those who were only beginning and still doubted themselves the rest of us were able to see the change setting in from great number from great numbers of such experiences we would predict that the doubter who still claimed that he hadn't got the spiritual angle which is how to live life on life's terms doesn't necessarily mean you have a booming lightning bolt through your head which says you are now connected to the universe it's a, almost like a gradual awakening that reality is better than oblivion yes those who hadn't got the spiritual angle and who still considered his well-loved AA group the higher power would presently love God and call him by name and that is a, a personal faith matter but for me uh, God is love God is truth love and wisdom and that comes from the universe and not from me I'm full of attitudes opinions and faith faith in whatever it happens to be but when it says presently love God and call him by name I call that the universe nature providence life on life's terms being in reality where else would God be if he were to be anywhere so what can I say about recovery it works for me as long as I work at it and more, most important it is the many voices in AA which have made it possible for me to be sober today and it's been going on for a few years now so what follows after this is a, a little bit from the past and also from the present and something about step six June is all about step six and the daily reflections follows Hello, it's Don in London. My daily reflections for June 4th, 2010. And I take them from this book, Daily Reflections, and one or two ideas maybe I have of my own. So for June 4th it says this, letting go of our old selves. Carefully reading the first five pro proposals, that's the first five steps, we ask if we had omitted anything, for we are building an arch through which we shall all walk a free man at last and now we are ready to let God remove from us all the things which have, we have admitted are objectionable and for me God is truth, God is love and God works through people so guess where I get my inspiration from not from me well it grows inside so it goes on to say which is all about step six the sixth, the sixth step is the last step preparation step although I have already used prayer extensively I have made no formal request of my higher power in the first six steps. I have identified my problem, 
come to believe that there is a solution, made a decision to seek this solution, and have cleaned house. That's in step four. I now ask, I am willing now ask, am I willing to live a life of sobriety, of change, to let go of my old self, old thinking, old feelings? I must determine if I am truly ready to change. I review what I have done and become willing for God to remove all my defects of character. For in the next step, I will tell my Creator, I am willing and will ask for help. If I have been thorough in the preparation of my foundation and feel that I am willing to change, I am, I am then ready to continue with the next step. If we still cling to something we will not let go, we ask God to help us be willing and that comes from Alcoholics Anonymous, page 76, probably the fourth or third edition. <coughs> and with all the steps, they are removed. All these things work in a day. That's the 12 steps. So although we may utilize them every day, if we don't keep on utilizing them daily, they will go dormant again. So the ones which were important to me this morning, hurt people, hurt people. If we are hurting, how likely is it that we will consciously or unconsciously hurt others? Withdrawn, isolated in our thinking and feelings, we remain in the dark. Make contact, a phone call, a meeting, let out and express. If we hurt less, we hurt less people. And the other one for me, letting go of our old selves, the daily reprieve from old attitudes and behaviour. Our daily reflections, we live the steps today. And any time we can return, and any time <coughs> we can return to old feelings and thinking, keep on living in the day, day-sized. That is living in the day with day-sized stuff going on. We treat ourselves and our and others more right-sized, relevant to today and not old history. And then choices are manageable. More later. John in London, hello. It's June 4th, 2009. In the UK, it's uh, a half sunny day. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance, alcohol, my behaviour, workaholic, uh, relationshipaholic. Uh, I guess trying to be as good as I could get. Not perfect. Knew I couldn't be that, but I would strive towards it. And I guess often I wanted to make progress. And I probably, in, I probably measured myself in the wrong way. Uh, the measures being my usefulness to other people, the amount of money I used to earn, the uh, hours I put into the job, and the result, whether th there was a good result or a bad result. So those are all external fixes, if you like, to how I might feel about myself. And it doesn't actually, um, it doesn't cover self-esteem, confidence, faith. It's more about ego, brave-facing, and covering up the fear of getting it wrong. So these days, on a daily basis, I can get it so wrong people get hurt and uh, in hurting another person I hurt myself. So these days I try not to hurt others and I've made a decision to alter my uh, one, or, one or two of my meetings in order that the truth can be found of the situation without me and that's even better because I don't need to try and teach or push a person into a particular point of view, certainly not my point of view. So important here on YouTube uh, everybody's unique, authentic, with their own take on life today. And hopefully uh, the AA program, Alcoholics Anonymous, of which I am a staunch believer in, can help me. And it helped me stop drinking, keeps me sober a day at a time, and keeps me asking those questions. Can I change? What need I change about me and my outlook and behaviour? Attitude and behavioural change. So AA, the fellowship, helps me on a daily basis. Just to keep calibrating. And uh, I had a bit of a run-in yesterday, and quite rightly, uh, information given was received as if it was a criticism, and sometimes that happens, not intended, but that's the way it landed. So I own up to my part in that, and it hurt another person, and that hurt me. So I need to acknowledge it and share it, but uh, that's my truth. They may feel differently, and that's, that, that's absolutely right. 
in the process of this it means that I will alter some of my behavior in the future which is what is good about the program we don't have to hang on to old ideas of being the right being in the right and uh, then telling everybody what it is because I don't know what's right for you so I can only tr share my experience strength and hope of what works for me uh, in recovery from addiction and uh, a keystone in that or um, a main plank in that has got to be fellowship the fellowship of AA which enables me to find out who I am on a daily basis because hopefully I'm changing on a daily basis to take account of what is going on and not what I wish it to be so AA has a preamble shared at every meeting in London there are 720 or so per week and this preamble is shared to explain what the fellowship can and cannot do and where it focuses so I don't speak for AA never can never will unique authentic people go to AA and they remain unique and authentic so the AA preamble secures this and it says Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is this desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety and if I feel for any reason that my presence might actually undermine sobriety that, that is not me being less confrontational um, it's about keeping AA safe and uh, sometimes we upset people and they need a space to share the truth of their situation so I'm modifying and uh, you know it's not for me to try and resolve it it's not for me to try and put my point of view it's not for me to try and change another person's mind or their attitude or behavior all I can do is make it right in my own mind how to be helpful to me and how to be helpful generally so that means I am not the guru I am not on a pedestal I can only share as I see and as I live so it's not being it's not being right or wrong it's just making sure life can go along as it can do and uh, yeah I don't need to assert being right or wrong what I need to assert is am I on the right path am I getting some wisdom am I finding serenity in knowing what I can and cannot do and the answer is yes it, absolutely I can do one thing change me my outlook of my attitudes and my behavior but I can't change where I am uh, I am in recovery I can't go back to drinking I don't want to actually and it has no it has no absolute intrinsic intrinsic value because it won't improve my life one iota drinking alcohol so that's good the behavior can come out in different ways and that can be controlling manipulating or just plain ugly and uh, I don't want to be that way so what helps me uh, 12 steps of action attitude and behavioral change which is 12 steps of AA and uh, the fellowship which uh, offers unity service and recovery which is steps get me right uh, the, the fellowship is kept right if you like by those three tenets of, re of unity recovery and service which means that we go we find out we come away and we learn our we learn our path and not to be too dogmatic or phlegmatic is that the right word doesn't matter daily reflections uh, offers readings to do with the 12 steps and uh, June is all about step 6 which is about having our defects removed by God and uh, as you know by now on any given day I can believe in God be or I can be an agnostic atheist depends on my life experiences but what I do know is I ain't God I'm not God in any shape or form and I'm just equal to other people I don't want to be bigger or smaller I just want to be me and let everybody else get on with their lives happily and make connections or not as life goes on so for June 4th in the daily reflections and it's also the uh, politi political elections in the UK for some of our local government and Euro, Euro MPs that should prove interesting for a lot of people it says here letting go of our old selves carefully reading the first five proposals we ask if we have omitted anything for we are building an arch through which we shall walk a free man or woman at last 
Are we now ready to let God, good conscience, or whatever it is that is our higher power, remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable? And for me, they do go under those three headings, brave facing, ego, and fear. So there is an adjective for every sort of negative, isn't there? So if there is, I'm probably able to do any of them at any time as a reaction rather than a response. And it goes on to say, the sixth step is the last preparation step. Although I have already used prayer extensively, and that's meditation too, I have made no formal request of my higher power in the first six steps. I have identified my problem, come to believe there is a solution, made a decision to seek this solution and have cleaned house. I now ask, am I willing to live a life of sobriety, of change, to let go of my old self? I must determine if I am truly ready to change. I review what I have done and become willing for God to remove all my defects of character, all good conscience, or working with others so I understand what they are. For in the next step I will ask my Creator, or tell my Creator, tell or ask, I don't know, I am willing and will ask for help. If I have been thorough in the preparation of my foundation and feel that I am willing to change, then I am ready to continue with the next step. If we still cling to something, we will not let go. We ask God or good conscience or help, other help, to help us be willing. And I extend it from just being God because a lot of people have their own construct and understanding of their higher power. And I have mine. And uh, I like Gandhi's understanding about it. God is truth, God is love. And as somebody else said, God works through people. So there is a, an absolute connection in some sort of spiritual sense to making sense of this one day. And the spiritual connection is being able to cope in, in reality with less denial and less filters. So if we've done something which has hurt another person, it, thinking well hurt me back, and I don't want to carry on like that. So uh, I'm making spaces to find and grow and be, be right-sized with myself and other people. Not easy. So the serenity prayer, to God, good conscience, or whatever it is that is your higher power, Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference it is always just for one day. Tommy London here, June 4th, 2008, and I've tried to do this video several times, and uh, my computer updated itself so I couldn't actually see myself on this machine, I had to do a, a backup restore. And these videos are all about life in recovery, and life in recovery means that I don't jump and react quite as I did before, so rather than being completely bamboozled, I thought, let's do something like respond to my situation. And in the process of doing this, I've also had several calls from different people in the Fellowship of AA who wanted to talk to me and uh, share their news and what's going on so they could just express their living in the day bits to somebody else. And that's the gift of this program. My video is all about recovery and uh, I am a fellow in the Fellowship of AA or just an ordinary person who goes to AA meetings most days, so I get a bit of peace and sanctuary to work out, work out how to live a sober 24 hour period. It's all about one day only. Anyway, the AA preamble, here we go. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization, or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to, to, to achieve sobriety. And that takes a minute of time, but it's worth saying because uh, the fellowship is just a bunch of drunks getting together. We're not an organization, we're a fellowship, and what you see on one particular day is exactly what is available on one particular day. So sometimes we're good and sometimes we're naff, not at all good. And that's like me. But at the moment I feel absolutely amazing and uh, in a relationship for the first time in many years. So yippee ki as uh, Bruce Willis would say. So, 
AA, what's it do for me? Well, I have the daily reflections, which I can look at on a daily basis, and it gives me a bit of help, a helping hand to shape my outlook. And June is the sixth month, and there are 12 steps of AA, so this is month number six, all about step six. And that says, on this little card here, which I'll just take it open, 12 steps, 12 traditions. And uh, step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Now, there are six and a half billion people on the planet, each with their own understanding of God or no God. And it's not for me to exercise any judgment or imply that your God or your understanding of God is any, any better or worse than mine. And often uh, I refer to good conscience because that's the key to my spiritual condition, how my conscience is working on any daily basis, on, on any given day. So June 4th, from the Daily Reflections, it says here, letting go of our old self. Carefully reading the first five proposals, we ask if we have admitted anything. That's the first five steps. For we are dealing with an, we are building an arch through which we shall walk a free man at last. Are we now ready to let God remove all, remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable? And I have, but I'm trying to rely on my good conscience and whatever con connection I have to a, a higher power, which is for me good conscience, is observing civilization, society, and how, how we live, and do it to the best of my ability. And my defects of character are around fear, ego, and brave facing. And out of that drop all the different things, the difficult ways of looking at the world, where I might feel I'm in charge or not, and then feel a bit humpty-backed about it. And if I can be more in the mind of courage, faith, and confidence, then I'm onto a winner. So he goes on to say here from the daily reading, the sixth step is the last preparation step. Although I have already used prayer extensively, I have made no formal request of my higher power in the first six steps. I have, I have identified my problem, come to believe that there is a solution, made a decision to take these, this solution and have clean house. I now ask, am I willing to live a life of sobriety, of change, to let go of my old self? I must determine if I am truly ready to change. I review what I have done and become willing for God, or good conscience, to remove all my defects of character. I don't know that we can lose them altogether, because they are part of saving us from, from a fate worse than death sometimes. If I have been thorough in the preparation of my foundation, and feel that I am willing to change, I am re then ready to continue with the next step. If we still cling to something we will not let go, we ask God to help us. Be willing. And it comes from Alcoholics Anonymous, page 76, probably the third or fourth edition, I'm not sure which exactly. Oh, somebody's trying to get me. And in the goodness of all of this, um, what can I say? Step six, the defects or deficits, my liabilities, fear, brave face, ego. I need to do less of that, you know, and the, the defect is to do too much of that and not apply myself to set step seven, where I don't do enough of having a bit of faith, courage and confidence in myself to respond to life and also realise that everybody else is of equal size and weight. So where am I with June? It's a, a wonderful month and a bit of sunshine this morning which is making life feel a bit better amongst other things. And uh, as Bill sees it, for today, I'm reading The Rationalizers and the Self-Effacing. We are alcoholics, are the biggest rationalizers in the world. Fortified with, with the excuse that we are doing great things for AA, we can through spoken, we can through spoken, we can through broken anonymity, resume our old disastrous pursuit of personal power and prestige public honours and money, the same implacable urges that, when frustrated, once caused us to drink. And it goes on to say, Dr. Bob was essentially a far more humble person than I, and this is Bill Wilson talking about himself, and anonymity came rather easily to him. When it was sure that he was mortally afflicted, some of his friends suggested that it should be a monument erected in honour of him and his wife, Anne, befitting a founder of the, and his lady. Telling me about this, Dr. Bob grinned broadly and said, God bless them, they mean well, but let you and me get buried just like other folks. 
In Akron Cemetery, where Dr. Bob and Anne lie, the simple stone says not a word about AA. This simple final exam example of self-effacement is more permanent. It's more permanent worth to AA than any amount of public attention or any great monument. And you know, these videos, I may go on a bit, but the, uh, the point is, it's just me and my life in recovery. It's not a big life, it's just the same sort of size as anybody else's. And uh, what's making it work is knowing and understand how to be open, honest and willing in the day. To keep some simple, practical ways of living and uh, not exercising my defects of character which come out when I'm feeling angry or not quite right with myself. So for June 4th from the 24 hour day book a publication made by an AA person but not authorised by AA says here some things I like since becoming dry feeling good in the morning full use of my intelligence joy in my work the love and trust of my children lack of remorse the confidence of my friends, the prospect of a happy future, the appreciation of the beauties of nature, knowing what, is, what it is all about. I'm sure that I like these things. I'm sure that I like these things. Am I not? And yes, the answer is yes, most definitely. So those are those readings. And, you know, one or two of the conversations I've had this morning have been around how to be helpful to other people. And you know, what commitments can we have within the fellowship and outside the fellowship to make life work? Keeping sober so we may be useful to not only ourselves but to the rest of humanity. And it's a simple selfish program of self-awareness. I don't know if that's selfish, but putting self first and sober helps us be anything we can to be helpful to others and to conduct ourselves in society in a way which is helpful to everybody. And conforming, I suppose, to patterns of behaviour which help us keep our happiness going, our serenity. And on the back of this card also, although it's got the preamble there for AA, it also has this one. And what it says is, because it won't focus at the moment, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And when I realised that the things I cannot change on a daily basis are people, places and things, and the only thing I can change is me and my attitude and my behaviour, I feel like I'm on good ground going in the right direction. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, that fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about. 12 Steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the 12 Traditions in Fellowship, Unity, Service and Recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card, which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do, to include people around being sober one day at a time, and living a spiritual life, knowing what our feelings are, and not drinking. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. 
There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tra traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June for me is all about step six. So I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready, or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets? Or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to, the, in the biblical sense, the seven deadly, seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet, you'll find many a version, and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly. Right, so, pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities. It interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God. It has been called the sin from which all others arise. Pride is also known as vanity. So pride is the first deadly sin, or defect. Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities, or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the country virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD, an epic poem written. Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins, humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in in the way I understand it, in step six and step seven. So step six is all about my defects of character, and step seven is all about my shortcomings. So my defects of character are the sins, and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues, short on virtue. But in there somewhere is modern life, and life as it is today, and the changing values of society. But around that is a personal code so these 12 steps principles these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living and how we do that is entirely up to us no one's going to stop us doing it another way and if they were trying to stop us our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way we get stubborn and defiant often or I did so, step six in the fellowship program 
reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? From life. And also listening to the many voices in society, and probably in the Fellowship of AA, if you stick around long enough. So, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys, or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, yes, he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults, without any reservations whatever, has indeed come a long way spiritually, and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator. And again, don't get hung up on creator, it's the God of your understanding, or a power greater than you which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilised. Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain, certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol. Change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four, and then asked a, a higher power, God as I understand him, to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished. It was lifted right out of me. Well, it didn't quite work that way, because I was a stubborn son of a gun, and I thought I knew better for a long time. But when I got to fellowship, I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said, self-will will run riot, and willpower will fail. And it was right. So I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn in AA meetings all over the world statements just like this are heard daily it is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way, all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives, and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis, and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking, then my defects of character seem to diminish. Personality traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their, best, their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence. So working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here, their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. 
every normal person wants for example to eat, to reprodu reproduce to be somebody in society in the society of his fellows and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things indeed God made him that way he did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol but he did give him give man instincts to help him stay alive it is nowhere evidence evident at least in this life that our creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives indeed that would be foolish to think that so far as we know it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives indeed that would be unnatural since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose and that's to do with our thinking and, and our vices I guess when they drive us blindly or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth or as nature intended that is the measure of our character defects or if you wish our sins if we ask God will certainly forgive all our derelictions but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation that is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves he asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character so indeed it is about building of character and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be an addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society this does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was a few of them may be but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement and that's the game progress not perfect because if we try to be perfect from day one we would fail we would be back on pride and self will the key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn how many of us have this degree of readiness in an absolute sense practically nobody has it the best we can do with all honesty that, can, that we can summon is to try to have it even then the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point a point at which we say no I can't give this up yet and we should often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry this I will never give up such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves no matter how far we have progressed desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God or as some say nature and providence as we've got to where we are in our nature and providence that is as the world is today some who feel they have done but well may dispute this so let's try to think about it a little further practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps no one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief no one wants to be angry enough to murder lustful enough to rape gluttonous enough to ruin his health no one wants to be agonized by the chronic pain of envy or to be paralyzed by sloth of course most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock bottom levels we who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves yet can we after all hasn't it been self-interest pure and simple that has enabled us, most of us to escape not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects then where do we stand and this is where it's about you and your you and your understanding of life 
however it turns out to be. What we must recognize now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow, or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say, so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds? And even whilst staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything. I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us, for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path, and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. And uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it, because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy, to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction. Else, why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not, rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it? And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we, call it, only we call that retiring. Consider too our talent for pr procrastination, which is really sloth in five syllables. Nearly anyone can make a good list of, the, of such defects as these, and few of us would, be se would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt, if we go hell for leather in one direction thinking we're right, and we wonder why nobody's following us. We do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up. But if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right, or that my way or the highway is the right way, then we are alone again and isolated. And we may not drink, but we're certainly not as sober as we could be. Some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according of course to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress 
and are not perfect. We realize some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission, we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals. But, you know, strict adherence on a daily basis life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways so defects as well as virtues will be around there are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress seen in this light step six is still difficult but not at all impossible the only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying and that's it we make a beginning and keep trying so contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence we are on a better wicket if you like, if you're a cricketer if we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry the answer may be no so we keep on trying looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say this I cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up Let's dispose of what happen, appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy. Sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Or well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked, or we provoke others. The moment we say no never, our minds close against the grace of God, or common sense. After all, what else would God's words be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous, and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us as nature intended nature and providence all these wonderful words I like because you know spiritual is now spiritual is in the moment it's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now and either we accept life on life's terms acceptance is the key always or we get into trouble again and it's being defiant or angry against our situation often that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve so just a reminder the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger 
liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings the virtues which is all about step seven I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior or I can have a better day with a bit of courage faith confidence around humility kindness abstinence chastity, patience, liberality and diligence and I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past I was criticized deeply by someone when they I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect it's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out my defect would be not to say it if you get my drift so these are my views and understandings of step, step 6 and 7 so how does it work for me on a daily basis well in the morning I say how am I feeling why and what can I do and if I feel ok given my current situation my feelings fit my, my experience right now then life is understandable and comprehensible I can, I can get on with it but if my feelings don't fit my current reality my feelings are over the top in some way in a particular direction of those defects or sins or well, my virtues are without foundation courage, faith and confidence over elated I need to ask myself why am I feeling this way and that's not to actually analyze to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now, why? because I haven't given it a second thought what can I do? consider my options today or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step 6 June step 7 July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear very facing an ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober 
today. The Serenity Prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past. On Gracious me, a typical London night where I live. Anyway, Serenity Prayer. Yes, I even sleep through all of that during the night, often, and then get told about it by my neighbours. So to God or in good conscience, the Serenity Prayer is as follows. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today.